seven draws. That's Cruz in the black and Juan Manuel Marquez in the blue and red. Cruz is a guy who knows all the uh, tricks in the ring, and he'll probably need them tonight against Marquez because Marquez has just been developing uh, so fast. Now, Juan Manuel Marquez is a kid who was given a lot of trouble by a mover in the ring, Julian Wheeler, three fights back. In fact, uh, he was down, he was uh, losing that fight down a couple of points in the last round when he managed to stop Wheeler thanks to, uh, well, a very controversial call by Larry Rosadilla, the referee, in that final uh, round of that fight. And it appeared as though he was going to lose on points. But, Tom, it, it appeared to me as though he had learned his lessons and fought much better against uh, guys who were trying to utilize a moving style against him in his last couple of fights. And certainly Julio Gervasio, who just really had no chance that night, even though Gervasio was a former world champion. Well, Cruz will certainly give him a test. He will know what boxing is all about, even if he knocks Cruz out with one punch. Cruz has been around, in fact, uh, making only his second fight in the United States. He lost to Jesse Magana here at the Forum, but um, he fights and loses to awfully good guys. Okay. Robinson, Vasquez. He is 34, though. They call him Italian. Does most of his fighting overseas. Dominican from the Dominican Republic. He also, uh, Cruz, lost to Nassim Hamed a couple of years back. He's a very good boxer, very smart, hard target. But he took Hamed 12 rounds, did he not? I think he may have been stopped, but he wasn't He wasn't put down by, no. by Hamed. No. So he's got a good chin. He can take a punch if you can find him to land it. So far, it has been a very cautious first round, and Cruz obviously knows of the punching power of this young talent. Juan Manuel Marquez and is very, very careful and respectful of it, I'm sure. Marquez appears to have all the tools of a growing star. He's developing rapidly. Showed great improvement, as I mentioned, following that Wheeler fight. He handled, was handled by Nacho Beristein. He throws lots of punches, excellent quickness. He's aggressive, and he's got power. This is scheduled for 10. They're in the featherweight division. in Marquez fights, though, Tom, is that he gets better round by round. He usually improves as the fight goes on. Almost had Cruz uh, trapped for a moment, but he got away. We'll be back with round two. This is round number two. Juan Manuel Marquez in the blue, trimmed in red. Freddy Cruz in the solid uh, black trunks. Disqualification cost Marquez his first fight. Since then he's won 15 in a row. That was on a headbutt in his first bout, suffering his only loss. When that fight was stopped, he came back to knock out that same fighter in three rounds when they later fought. Marquez has had a history since we've seen him. First half of his career fought strictly in Mexico, but he's following that Marco Antonio Barrera formula. Yes. Yep. He just left Mexico, came here, got himself a home with Forum Boxing, and letting Forum Boxing basically handle the, uh, the promotion and uh, getting him experience. We saw first against Israel Gonzalez, and we were so impressed with him that night in December of 94 at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. And he's been fighting strictly under the auspices of Forum Boxing since he came to the U.S. He's had Cruz backing up almost continually since they, right after the introductions. Cruz very elusive and hard to hit and hard to put a glove on in a serious manner. Wily, crafty boxer. 34 years of age, you wonder what kind of shape he'd have to be in to go 10 rounds doing this with this youngster. Marquez is giving him a lot of shoulder feints, stepping forward with his foot, looking at the way that Cruz will move when he feints and when he does certain things. He's studying his opponent right here, Tom, which is nice to see in a young fighter. And, of course, the crowd is um, 
He's getting a little irritated at Cruz, who there threw a punch, one of the few he's thrown since the fight started. But his uh, movement, bouncing up and down, dancing away, boxing, eluding. One, Manuel Marquez doesn't sit well with the fans. Yeah, I talked to Antonio Curtis, the matchmaker, tonight before the fight. And I said, why would you put Marquez in with a guy like Cruz, who can be a real spoiler? He's a, he's a tough guy to look good against. And he says, in the long run, this will be what Marquez needs. You know, it's a, this is the kind of fight where you know, he'll learn a lot in this fight, and he'll learn how to fight these kind of guys. I'll tell you, Cruz has been very elusive, very hard to hit, slipping, sliding, moving. Marquez hasn't really gotten a clean shot at him. There's a perfect example of it. Pushing punches thrown, and Cruz just isn't there to be hit. Well, but you must land something yourself in order to win a round, Cruz. Well, I've given the first two rounds to Marquez, but uh, Cruz uh, certainly points up the fact that he is not going to be an easy guy to find. If his leg should go at age 34 or what if he should slow down, Marquez probably will catch him. There's Berestein talking to... Looks like he's teaching right in the corner. Well, he has a unique uh, rapport with his fighters. They, uh, it's almost uh, fatherly. It's almost uh, paternal the way he talks to them and how they look up and respect his thoughts and ideas. Now, Freddy Cruz, the people handling his corner over there. Well, he's not easily discouraged. That was proven early in his career when his first six fights, he had only one victory. And he's caught on to build up a darn impressive record. He has then. indeed, no question about it. Marquez stalking his man. Cruz just bouncing away. Throws two, three jabs, none of which landed. He continues to back away from Marquez and he ties him up. Chuck Cassett's the third man in the ring. Cruz has a good chin, despite the fact that he was down twice against Magaña. He doesn't get put down very often either. No. which landed and took a right hand sliding away from it thrown by Marquez. This is round number three. It's scheduled for ten. Most of those punches caught on the right hand glove. Of Cruz backing away. And he's got some real defensive techniques. He really has, yeah. It's, uh, Santa Domingo in the Dominican Republic. Fought with once in the United States. Fights in Europe, of course. Mainly Italy. Very cautious here. I think he must have seen that tape of that fight against uh, Julio Gervasio by Juan Manuel Marquez because he's fighting extremely cautiously his Cruz. Well, it's a, um, a style that is not going to endear him to the fans here at the Great Western Forum. Marquez bangs that left hand to the body. Whistles a left hand that Cruz caught partially on his right elbow. But you know, I, I'm sure he felt some of that power oh, in that shot. I tell you, that smacked pretty good. There's another one. And you can't block them all. Or can you? I don't know. We're looking at action in round three. Marquez seems to have found the uh, correct ticket here to winning, you know, and turning the fight in his direction, Tom, which is the left hook to the body, has landed very successfully.
action in round number four as it starts here. These are featherweights. That's Juan Manuel Marquez in the blue and red. In the solid black trunks, the wily, crafty veteran. He's 34, Freddy Cruz. Marquez is the young man, in case you've just joined us, that has that label of can't miss. Young featherweight has won 15 in a row. Has knocked out 12 of his opponents. It is a definite uh, piece of raw talent that uh, seems to get better every time we see him. And he's in against a guy who uh, has seen everything in the ring, Freddy Cruz, and a real trial horse for him. Banging away to the body. Cruz has not really been much of a force or a factor in this fight. Very elusive, very cautious, very difficult to hit. Whatever punches, or most of whatever punches have been thrown, have been thrown by Marquez. As a result, I've got him winning all the first three rounds. Perhaps Cruz feels he'll start coming on later in the fight, Tom, but the thing is, against Marquez, that's a dangerous type of strategy because Marquez just gets stronger every round. He gets better every round. We've seen that happen with him fight after fight. He just gets better with each succeeding round. The more he gets into it, the better he gets. Crowd is getting on Cruz's case pretty good. Bear in mind also that Marquez is only 22 is bouncing around and moving on legs that are 34. He stumbled and Cruz nearly fell down, not from a punch, just their feet got all locked up together. Well, Cruz is making it difficult for Marquez to really shine first three rounds. But he isn't doing anything about winning this fight. If indeed that's why he climbed into the ring. No, this is far different than the Julian Wheeler episode that Marquez found himself faced with because in that fight, while Wheeler was moving a lot of lateral movements, he was moving and jabbing, pumping Marquez with jabs, moving around the ring, throwing combinations. Cruz here basically has just been in a complete defensive posture. And in that Wheeler fight, as you pointed out, why it was just a quirk of fate, and Rosa Diaz stopped the fight with five seconds to go, complaining about the fact that Wheeler was holding. Uh, without any warning that he was going to stop the fight, he did. Wheeler was actually ahead on cards, Rich. I thought really that Wheeler deserved to win that fight. Yeah. Marquez working to the body, round four coming to a close. In the four rounds, it's 40-36 in favor of Marquez in Rich Morata's scorebook, which means, of course, that uh, Marquez has won all of the four rounds, getting 10 points for each of the four. A lesser number, in this case, nine to Cruz, making a total of 36. Cruz really has not done much offensively. He's been very clever and adroit, very slippery, very hard to find, very difficult to hit. I'd like to see from Marquez's standpoint, see him go back to that left hook to the body, Tom. I thought it was really successful for him in the third round. He starts off there trying to double up off of that. Left yeah, hook come up with an uppercut right off it, and that's not a bad weapon. Some wag behind us between rounds where we're trying to hold up. A pool on whether or not Cruz would throw a serious punch here. What round? He's um, obviously well-schooled. He works to the body, works to the head as well. Cruz threw a punch that uh, was nearly a very effective item. A moment ago, Marquez just did slip away, and there's a left hand by Cruz, who's beginning to show a little more interest in the fight here in round number five. And yeah, that's kind of the way that he did it against Magana. Magana built up a big early lead, and Cruz closed the gap coming down the stretch. But that's what he needs to do, get that jab to work. in the black trunks and Juan Manuel Marquez in the blue and red. I suppose there's an added burden put upon the shoulders of young uh, Juan Manuel Marquez. Everybody says you're going to be a champion. You can't miss. He wants to go out and knock Freddy Cruz out tonight. He just can't find Cruz to knock him out. Try as he might. I'm sure that was the one to go out and impress 
impress everybody with a big time win here. Marquez Wright, at least so far, has not found its home. It's, see, he's missing with that right. That's a big shot for him. He needs to be able to land that one. His left hook has been a pretty good weapon to the body, and his left jab has done well, but his right cross, he needs to follow behind that jab and land that right cross. He'll be in a lot better shape. Now Cruz actually pins Marquez against the ropes for a moment and landed a couple of pretty good right hands. Not devastating, but punches that scored. Chuck Hassett says no holding and hitting. Cruz, um, very, very clever, blocked most of those. Round five coming to a close. us to the end of round five well we haven't seen many knockout type punches here in the five rounds so far in this one but how about this group of devastating hitters Roy Jones Jr. you know he's a basketball player too Mitch. <laughs> yeah we, sh we should put a boxer slash point yeah. guard by his name there seems to be some controversy growing uh, here ring magazine is seriously considering putting De La Hoya as their number one now in the, the pound for pound list but I well I don't know until somebody beats Jones I think De La Hoya uh, modest enough to be right where he is. I like him there with Trinidad and Barrera. Barrera fights Forte. this uh, weekend. Whitaker has dropped down. A lot of people think we're a little too critical of Whitaker, but um, I don't know why he doesn't get in to fight one of those guys, but he hasn't. I think it's a nice list. We'll Gold see Hamid. Too sharp Johnson huh? there, number 11. Yeah. We'll see him August 5th, right here on Prime at the Forum. Yep, yeah, his first title defense since winning the IBF flyweight title. Up they come for round number six. It's scheduled for ten. We will see what Riddick Bowe does this Thursday night in his fight with Andrew Galata at Madison Square Garden and see if he warrants a reintroduction into our devastating game. Well, I've, uh, I think Bowe's a good heavyweight. I really do. When motivated. And, uh, well, I just wonder if anybody beside Tyson will motivate the guy. I don't know. I don't know about that. I think he's a bona fide uh, nice left hand by Marquez. Works to the body, tried to bring it up, to double up with it. But for all the world, like Marquez was wide open for that right hand by Cruz, but he kind of pulled it up short, Rich. I, looked like he could have thrown it and hit Marquez right in the middle of the face with it. And almost jumping right into Cruz doing that jab. That right continues to miss though by Marquez. Yeah. That's a big weapon for him. You know, as a one-handed fighter, you're going to be a lot less spectacular than if you're, you know, breaking your opponent with two hands. But it was that left-right combination, and the right was devastating that knocked out. His last opponent out in the fight we saw here at the forum. Gervasio was that the oh boy, left and a right. The picture perfect. And the right hand just flattened Gervasio. Yeah, and in the fight before that, when he fought uh, Hector Chong here at the forum on March 4th, he scored two knockdowns in that fight before a fourth round knockout, and both were with clean right hands. We're watching the action in round number six. It has been pretty one-sided. There's a little move by Marquez. Step to the right. Come back and throw that left hand. The youngster trying to teach the wily, crafty veteran a thing or two. So far, Cruz has been content to be in a defensive mode. Boxing beautifully. Marquez has not been impatient tonight. I think his, his patience has been impressive. He's not going crazy wild. He hears the boos from the fans. He's not getting upset. He's just following through with the fight plan and looking to box his man. Good left hand. It might have been a little bit low, and Cruz indicated as much. Chuck Hassett caution Marquez to bring it up. But I think Marquez um, realizes that he's got a partisan crowd here and that uh, the boos are not for him. I'm sure that uh, he would love to have Cruz make a toe-to-toe -to -toe out of this. I don't know if that is Cruz's intent at all. So far, doesn't indicate that. So round six coming to a close. Scheduled for ten. We'll be back after this. Round number seven, scheduled for ten. Featherweights, Manuel Marquez. Excuse me, Juan Manuel Marquez. 
in the blue, trimmed in red. Freddie Cruz in the solid black. It has been a uh, cat and mouse game. Cruz so far evasive and slippery, wild, crafty, consummate boxer. Marquez unable to get a real shot at him, has not been able to hurt him, but whatever punches of substance have been thrown, have been thrown by Marquez. here in the second half of the bout, but he's lost every round certainly so far, Tom. And I would think so. It's almost to the point of needing a knockout to win. Yes. Or some very big rounds. Which I think would obviously, boy, they flashed heads together. I don't see blood coming anywhere from uh, the forehead of Cruz. Chuck Hassett says, let's get out with it, but Marquez indicated with a show of pain on his face that uh, yeah, look at the bump rolls right immediately on his forehead, Tom. Kind of a slapping left hand by Marquez. One of Cruz dances, slips and slides and moves away for 10 rounds. It's a testimony to great conditioning on a set of 34-year-old legs that has been around a long time. Marquez is trying to find his man for one solid shot to slow him down long enough to level some leather at him. Right hand by Cruz. Yeah, that one had some serious intentions on it for the first time, I think. You know, he's had an opportunity to throw that punch a couple of times at Marquez, and he's almost thrown it halfway a couple of times, pulled it up short. that jab go if Cruz steps to his right and throws that right hand right over the top of it he can score with it. Marquez has got a pretty good jab he snaps it out there pretty strong Tom and a lot of times he'll throw it out not just once but throw two jabs out and try to follow it in. Unfortunately for him his right has not been there tonight but he's been doing most of his damage with his left. Another right hand by Cruz. Somewhat effective punch for him here. His time is running out in round number seven. We'll be back to see about round number eight after this. There was a clash of heads in round number seven between the two fighters. There you see them come together. Interestingly enough, there was some slight blood from the left eye, as I mentioned in that round, by uh, Marquez. And Chuck Hassett has told the judges he's calling a headbutt there. Well, I really didn't think the headbutt opened up the cut. I didn't either. I, I saw a bump go up immediately on the forehead of uh, Marquez. Marquez, but uh, I don't think it's going to come into effect anyway. No, I don't very either. Very small cut. Yeah. Very small. This is round number eight. Scheduled for 10. Now Cruz has got to get busy here. He, he tripled up on his jab a few moments ago, which is a good start. Crowd continues to be highly critical of Freddy Cruz. Well, it's disappointing. I'm sure many of these fans either were in attendance or watched on television that night at the Anaheim Park. And you see Juan Manuel Marquez in that scintillating performance against Julio Gervasio, and you say, man, I want to go see them. When this guy fights again, I'm rushing down there and seeing him. I want to see this. Well, they all came down here, and they were hoping for that kind of a performance. And Cruz has not given Marquez really the opportunity to be that kind of a fighter here tonight. It takes two to tango. And despite the best efforts of Cruz and uh, how well-intentioned he is, why uh, Cruz... Uh, Marquez, I should say. Cruz is just not uh, not going to allow him that kind of an evening. The crowd thought that he was going to stand and exchange punches with this hard-hitting youngster. That would be mistaken. In fact, as you pointed out earlier, Rich, that Marquez has not lost his cool or composure. I think it's a credit to him and to the people in his corner. 
is he's a pretty good left hand right at the midsection. It'd be easy to become frustrated and just kind of lose your head and go crazy out there. Jerry, he's only 22 years old and he wants to look impressive and he wants to build a following and he wants to be like Marco Antonio Barrera, who's so popular in these parts right now. There's a little more show of blood there in the corner of the left eye. Manuel Marquez. Referee Chuck Hassett has indicated a headbutt is responsible for it. Coming to the close of round number eight, it is scheduled for ten. Cruz making a bit more of an evening out of it here. Round. It's scheduled for ten. Ten seconds remain. And we'll be back to see about the final two rounds. Number nine coming up in a moment. Scheduled for 10, he's a featherweight. So that's Freddy Cruz in the black. And the blue trimmed in red, Juan Manuel Marquez. Looking for a 16th in a row. He's got a record of 15 and 1. Cruz has been here, there, and everywhere. Unbelievable fine record, 49 and 8 with 7 draws. each one of them. Telling Cruz quit holding and hitting. And he uh, also cautioned or warned Marquez about the low blow. Boy, that made me <laughs> South of Tijuana by about 200 miles, wasn't it? Well, maybe he just lost his patience for a moment. Well, it there. could be. It could be, but... Uh, maybe he just thought, well, let me give you one thing to remember yeah. by. Take something back to your corner. <laughs> suddenly ended up fighting as a southpaw. But I think the boxing skills of Cruz might have been very evident to you there. Marquez advanced, looked as though he might have a shot at him, and Cruz just bounced, weaved, slipped away, and Marquez never really got to put any serious leather on him.
needs a lure, I'm sure. Cruz into making some kind of a wrong move. It is a testament, though, to the singular defensive skills of Cruz that Marquez has not been able to land one significant right hand of meaning here this evening. And very few. There it is, though. That was one of them. And Cruz said, no, I didn't get knocked down, but that's it's a moot point. It finally happened. Oh, boy, he says, I'm not hurt, but he did get, he went down, and despite his protest, does he think this is going to uh, take a win away from him? I don't think he was in any shape to win the fight anyway. I mean, in the judges' cards. But I'll tell you, he spent nine, nine rounds stepping away from that right hand, and now with just under a minute to go in round 10. <laughs> First time Juan Manuel was able to land it clean up. Well, not so patiently. For nine rounds and two minutes. And finally, we're rewarded with a solid right hand shot that saw Marquez knock Freddy Cruz in the back of his lap. Yeah, I think Marquez was a lot more patient than his fans tonight. Well, I'm sure he's glad he was at least able to close the show with a flare here in the 10th round. Yes. Just seconds remain. Marquez. Nice mixture there. There's the bell, and it's over. <laughs> that was some bad feeling over what went on in that ring. I'm sure. I'm sure. The official sponsor of the 1996 Olympic Summer Games, this Bud's for you. While we await the official decision, we're very thankful for Ramon Hurtado and Hector Chavez. What a fight <laughs> they gave us. Uh, that was terrific. The light flyweights. Jimmy Lennon Jr. has got the official decision. Jimmy, if you will. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of boxing, we have a unanimous decision. All three judges score the bout 100 to 89 in favor of the winner, Juan Manuel Marquez. 100 to 89 on all the cards. It was a one-sided thing. You talk about a Kofax shutout. That was really one of them here in the ring tonight. A one-sided affair, and um, Juan Manuel Marquez now goes to 16 and 1, and a disappointing performance for Freddy Cruz. Well... prediction that is, is would he be susceptible to a punch has he really ever taken a good punch all heavyweights are susceptible to punches this is the heavyweight division one punch can change a fight around you look at Jimmy young right now your thought well my thoughts this is a typical boxing match the KG veteran with all the experience against the young kid on the way up in my opinion youth will be served all right the heavyweights and a fight that many boxing observers are looking closely at because Jerry Cooney is finally getting an opponent who is and weighs in at 223 pounds even. He's ranked number six in the world by the WBC, Jimmy Young. 